Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's make some games. So this is a 3D tower defense game that I've been working on in Game Maker Studio 2.3, and I think today I'm going to spend the, uh, the video doing just level design, because level design is fun, and it's what the last couple of videos have been gearing up towards, at least in part. And um, I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to make use of that. So uh, this is a this is a very basic level editor. You can click on things. You can nudge them around uh, with the arrow keys. You can scale them up and down. What is it? Control to scale up and down. Yeah, that's that's scale. You can make things bigger or smaller. And let's start to do something with this. Let's start to to do something that would make the game resemble like a world. So the. Uh, the path that enemies are going to follow when they come out. Uh, I might as well show what it looks like. If Game Maker ever starts responding, that would be appreciated. Uh, it looks like this. I don't know if I'm going to keep this. I'm probably not. I just drew out a path uh, way back in like part four or whatever. And um, by clicking on random points, I'm probably not going to keep this. I think I'm going to... Um, well, for one, later on, I might actually make a path tool in this just to make it easier so that you can, so that I can see, and by extension, you can see the, uh, the nodes on the path where things are going to move um, in relation to the 3D objects in the world, which are not shown in the path editor in Game Maker. Um, but I'm also just going to pretend it doesn't exist. I will recreate it later so that it has some actual like, game design principles in it. Generally, in tower defense games, the, uh, the early maps um, won't be too difficult. They'll have points where the path crosses over itself so that the tower can attack a foe at more than one points on the track. Hey. I think somewhere in this notebook I have dueled out, like, some potential map designs, path designs, but we won't be worrying about that right now. So first, let me, um, let me delete all these. There is something that I would like to have, and that is the ability to actually select the model of a, uh, of a 3D object. To set the model of a 3D object uh, in the editor, right now when you click, things are just spawned with random with random models, and that's not really um that's not really a useful uh, tool for level design. So I'm going to delete all these. Actually, I'll just come back to it later. Uh, what I'm going to do is how are models defined and set to objects when you click on stuff. So when you click, when you spawn an entity which is, I think, this code here. It just selects a random... Okay. It just selects a random object. So instead, what I think I'll do is... Um, there will be a set object that is spawned whenever you click. So let's see. Uh, where is Where are the editor variables defined? Up here. So I will say instead editor... Editor model index equals zero, and then uh, down here, instead of a random number between zero and the size of the list, uh, we will say spawn editor model index, and we will be able to um, we will be able to modify that. Uh, let's say, let's see. I suppose what are some keys that are not being used if. I could say like F4 and F5 to cycle through models or something like that. I could also say like Alt plus the arrow keys or something like that. I don't want to go too crazy with keeper combinations. We'll say F4 and F5 and that'll be check pressed instead of checked continuously. Uh, if you press F4, then editor model index um, is going to, okay. I'll go through this slowly. We're going to subtract one from the editor model index if editor model index is less than zero. That's not a zero. That's a zero. Then editor model index equals equals the greatest element, the greatest uh, numbered index in that list. Uh, DS list size of the list minus one. Um, and then likewise, if we hit F5, we'll go the opposite way. So that's going to be plus equals one. And we're going to say if greater than or equal to the size of the list, 
in which case it would be uh, overflowing the list. We will set the index to zero. There is a much nicer mathematical trick you can you can use to accomplish this, but first I'm going to um, first I'm just going to draw the name of the uh, of the model that we are that we are, have selected. So that's going to be env object names env object names env object list editor model index. So we're just going to draw the name of the thing that we might spawn on the screen. And uh, we'll see that it's working. And then, okay, there is a, uh, there is a period in that name, apparently, because it didn't, it didn't replace that part of the file extension. And then when we spawn things, we will just be spawning melons. Um, F4 is going to change that to a pine tree detailed, which are these. F5 will bring us back to the melons. I said F5, not F6. F5 will bring us back to the melons. And then um, if we hit F5 again, pumpkins and flowers and so on and so forth. Okay, that's working as intended. That didn't take too long to set up. To make the code nicer, because I insist on having nice code, uh, we can say instead of editor model index minus equals one, we can say editor model index equals that plus the size of the list minus one modular division the size of the list. And then that will eliminate the need for all that. And then uh, likewise, instead of saying plus one, uh, you can say, oops, where was I? I hit something instead of the key I meant to hit. Let's come back to, I'm not interested in the gameplay stuff. It's over here. Index plus one mod the size of the list. So that will add one to the list. And if the list is greater than or equal to the size of the list, it will, uh, it will modular division, wrap it back down to zero. So that is the nicer way of what I did two minutes ago. Uh, let's just make sure I type that all in right by testing it out. So we have a melon, a four, we have a pine tree, a five, pumpkins. Okay. That's nice. I'm not going to do anything where you like click on a model and click on an object and change its model. This is very basic. It's good enough to allow me to get the job done without like wasting a lot of my time, but it's not, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time working on it. Let me, uh, let me commit that change. Excellent. And just because the uh, just because the period in the name is annoying me, where are they put into the uh, into the DS map object name? Okay, so that should be replaced dot zero 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 dot d3d with um with an empty string. Let's just see if that looks better, and we are. Not working. I was not expecting that to um to cause an error. Oh, I know what's going on. So in the file name, if I were to go into the uh, open project in Explorer and look at the uh, look at the map file, you would see that in the JSON, the uh, each of the model names being loaded also has the the period at the end. So suddenly, uh, the game is trying to. Oh, that's ugly. Um, you see here, suddenly the game is trying to look up a model that doesn't exist in the list because they, they no longer have the, um, the period at the end of the name. That's honestly fine. I can live with that. I'm going to maybe not get rid of that. I'm going to not load the map and I'm just going to start over because I'm going to do that anyway, let's be honest, in level design. So let's, um, I'm not going to I'm not going to address terrain for the time being. Later on, I'm probably going to change the orange and yellow checkerboard to some kind of um, I don't know, grass tile or something. That is a subject for some other time. First, let's find a. Uh, I'm going to just find some trees. Detailed dark. That sounds fun. What's that look like? Okay, that's what that looks like. I'm going to scatter some of these around the uh, around the perimeter.
it doesn't matter if they go like off the room because the the room boundary doesn't really mean anything. We can go outside the room outside of the room if we want. I'm just going to um scatter a couple of these around and then later on I will mix in a little bit of variety. All right. And uh, maybe maybe um add some different kinds of trees, move them around the uh, move them around the edges so that they're not in like a nice neat line. Later on, you can see as I click, as I spawn things in, the frame rate is steadily going down. There are ways this can be optimized. There can be ways like tree drawing can be optimized. For objects that are never going to move, you can um, you can combine them together into a single vertex buffer through uh, through code. And that will um, that will mean that the computer only has to draw one thing instead of like 50 things or however, there's more than 50 things in here by now, like 70 or 80 things probably. And um, that's that's faster because the computer, the graphics card is good at doing things in parallel. So um, it doesn't really care if it's drawing one vertex buffer with a thousand vertices or one vertex buffer with 10 vertices. It'll take about the same amount of time. Um, and it's, uh, it's much better than drawing um, 100 vertex buffers with 10 vertices because uh, graphics cards are good at that kind of thing. So that's a nice border. Okay, way back in the beginning, I kind of randomly generated rooms and it looked kind of like this, except that there were all sorts of things uh, and not just trees. Let's see, I will, that's a shorter tree. Yeah, that's a shorter tree. I will throw in a couple of these. So maybe not, I won't make them all. Um, I will make them all these tree basic, whatever they're called. I'll scatter in a few of these as well. All right, I am really happy with the ray casting because it just it just does what it's supposed to. Usually, it doesn't it doesn't always detect a hit. As you can see, my mouse cursor is not quite on these things, but it's it's good enough. It just uh, for the for the purposes of this, it's good enough. Actually. Now that I say that out loud, I might want to tighten that up a little, for, a, a little bit for use with towers, but that's okay. All right, so we're just replacing some of these with other trees. It would be helpful if I could move the camera a little bit more besides just um, moving it around, if I could tilt it up or down or something like that. Do I really want that tree out there in the distance? Yeah, the, the collision boxes for these things are, uh, are not quite um, complete. I think they're a little smaller than they maybe should be. I could um, I could speed this up. Would that be relaxing? I haven't done a, a speed level design thing in a in a while. Due at least in part to the fact that I haven't done that much level design period in a while. Um, and when I do, it tends to involve a lot of like sitting there and thinking about things, so it doesn't make for the greatest video. But this is um, this counts, right? This counts. This would count. Kind of a peacefully mindless, I guess I could say. I want the I want these trees to be like the most common, but I do want to scatter a decent amount of the other ones in. As you can tell, I'm going for kind of a forest aesthetic for at least this level, given that the uh, the enemies of choice are insects. That feels like it would be appropriate. I wrote down some ideas for level designs in my notes here. Uh, what were they? Forest, plains, picnic baskets. Did I mention that earlier? Things, that were, places where you ex would expect to find bugs that aren't like inside a computer. All right. A fun fact is that the, the word bug in, in computing comes from um, the days when computers were made of, of vacuum tubes and stuff. And when a program would go wrong, they would actually inspect the insides of the computer to see if there was like an infestation of ants or whatever that might, that might have been causing issues with the electrical conductivity or other things inside the computer. Um, if you've never, uh, if you've never heard that before, heard that story, if you've never thought about that before, I hope I've, um, I hope I've improved your day by giving you that knowledge. Okay. What is it? F1 to save? I will save, um, now. Where is even the Bombardier folder? It starts with the letter B. I have, I have two Game Maker project folders, one on my C drive and one in my documents. All right, there it is. And you can see, uh, again, the frame rate is slowly but surely going down as I spawn things in. Um, I will be keeping an eye on that, but not like too much of an eye on that, because like I said, later on, optimization will be a thing that I do. 
Uh, if you are running this on your own computer, I'm interested in seeing how this will perform. Uh, I have a 1063 gigabyte uh, graphics card. And if you have something else, something newer, something older, I'm interested in seeing how my performance will be affected. What else can I do? What other models are in here? Ooh. What line crashed it? Did I click on something invalid? All right, first let's uncomment this and see that it all loads properly, because that's gonna be something that I want to happen. I'm not super clear on what I did to make it crash though. I don't know what key I hit because I just kind of landed my hand on my keyboard. That's a tower in a place where it shouldn't be. Hang on. Disallowing the player to build towers like inside trees and stuff is also a task for another day. I'm going to have to do some kind of collision detection. You know, there are a lot of, to click on things. I'm not sure what I did to crash it. Did I, did I hit like, one of the other function keys that did something. Pine small. All right, well, do I want pine trees? The uh, the theme so far is is deciduous trees. At least I assume this guy here is supposed to be a deciduous tree. Um, I don't know if I want to mix and match. Detail dark, default fall. I can throw in a couple of those. It is uh, the beginning of fall right now in real life, so I can, I can throw in a few of those, I guess. Add a little bit of color, maybe. Just uh, one or two here and there. All right, now I am like hyper conscious of what key I might be pressing, just in case I do something that might crash the game again, which is something I definitely don't want to do for obvious reasons. All right, there's a bunch of trees like clustered together here. I don't know if I need all of those. Do something more like that. Um, these guys are definitely a little bit too regular. Let's uh, scatter them a little bit more. And again, I, I do suddenly feel like the ability to tilt up and down, at the very least, and maybe pan from side to side, will be a welcome addition, uh, much more so than I felt at the, at the beginning of the series. Let us save again, just in case I do whatever I did that crashed it. And, um, okay. What other decorations are there? We have rocks. All right, those are those. I kind of feel like suddenly... Most of these objects have, um, like, it isn't super important which end is front, back, side, side, whatever, so maybe... Let me add in something. I will randomize their Z rotation a little bit, the rotation around the vertical axis when I spawn them in. And also, I might give their scale, like, a slight amount of randomness. So that is here. And... All right, uh, collision shape is not affected by, uh, by scale, because they don't really have to be. For just for the just the decoration stuff and rotation and scale are vectors of some values. So I will say now back in the uh, back before the days of lightweight object structs in Game Maker, I would just use like x rot, y rot, z rot for my rotation uh, values. So that's that's kind of a habit that I've been slowly but surely trying to break. Uh, quaternions would obviously be optimal, but I do not have the patience to sit down and implement quaternions. Um, I'll go with random 360. And we'll say that the scale is a random amount from like 0.9 to let's say 1.1. .1. And the, um, the all, all three aspects of the scale will be the same. All right, so for the sake of, uh, just for the sake of doing that. We'll also do that. This is very much evocative of trying to fix the engine of a car while we're barreling down the highway at, at, hi at highway velocity, but We will retroactively uh, do that to all of the other things that have already been spawned and saved. Thing is a terrible name for a variable and you should never use it, but this code will be gone in two minutes.
Okay. So now there's a little bit of a built-in random range. Now there's a little bit of built-in uh, variation in the look and uh, size of all these things in the world. That's nice. It shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be anything too elaborate. And there is an error in the lighting shader, and it looks like the normal the surface normals are not correctly being rotated. Okay, um, they, they, they look more scattered now, which is what I want. Things are rotated at random angles. They have a slight variation in their scale. That's good. Let's F1 save that. No, oh, we're not in edit mode, are we? Let's F1 save that. And if I, if I uncomment this and load it back out, those changes should be saved and I can safely get rid of this. And I will have a look at my lighting shader momentarily. Nope. Those changes did not get preserved. Why did those changes not get preserved? They certainly should be. I see the rotation is there. Is the scale being saved? I don't think the scale is being saved. Oh, it's because, um... All right, they're not being loaded exactly. Uh, only their position is actually being applied. If anyone's wondering why rotation is highlighted in red here, I believe that is a variable which is uh, built in for sequences. Uh, you can use it for other things outside of sequences, but uh, it will still be syntax highlighted when you do that. And now it looks like, okay, now rotation and scale is applied. That is what we want. And I actually might make this two commits. So we'll say, And also I'll get rid of the stuff at the bottom. I want my commits to be neat. All right. So we'll do that. And we will next do, where was it? It was in load map, this. You know what I suppose I can do? Since a struct is a struct, no need to overcomplicate things. That'll do just as well, right? Is Z position actually not? Yeah, that, that did it. And Z position is apparently not, um, was not being accounted for. Interesting, because I know Z position was being saved. There's no point in not loading it. If I put something below the floor and saved it, I probably want it to still be below the floor when I load it back out. All right. Commit that. And I wanted to have a look at the lighting shader. So um, in shaders, I, I suppose in vertex and in fragment, where is a... World normal is being used. What happens if I rotate something slightly? Does the lighting stay the same? Um, hang on. Okay. When I, uh, when I mouse over one thing, the light information gets removed from anything that's drawn after that, apparently. I think that's, I think it's being removed from anything drawn after the, the highlighted object. Um, which isn't, which isn't something that will affect gameplay, but it is rather annoying and it could be a hint as to what's actually happening. I 
Because that's a... Uh... Saying the shader set proceeds to ignore the uniforms, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. That's more or less... That's better, that fixed one bug. If I rotate that a little and click off, this this face here, let's see if I rotate it a little more, if is that face going to still be dark? It is. So that definitely looks like um Is that done in other entity render also? Like tower render? Yeah. It definitely looks like we are not taking the world matrix into account there in that in that lighting shader, but as far as I can tell, we are. Okay, by any chance, are the actual surface normals of these models what they actually should be? Let me, um, I'm going to put these through, um, Penguin. If it ever, if Penguin ever starts over here. And I'm going to uh, recalculate all of the surface normals and I'm going to see if, if there's something wrong with those for any reason whatsoever. I guess I could test that by um, just like opening something in the model creator and seeing if it looks the way it's supposed to, but if I, if I resave over that and I guess while, while Penguin is trying to run, I can, I can look at this again, see if Pine Tree Detailed looks the way it's supposed to. So you're gonna rotate. It looks like you're being lit correctly now. Yeah, this, this side over here is perpetually lit correctly. So it's possible that the surface normals for these things are just messed up, which would honestly be one of the easier fixes to make because I can do that in batch if, if Penguin ever decides it wants to run. I have way too many Game Maker windows open right now. All right, it's moving. Okay, so let me... Uh, just drag all these guys in here. That's not a penguin screen. Let me drag all these guys in here and if I look at um if I look at everyone, go to normals, set flat normals. Yeah, it looks like possibly not everything surface normal was correct. Um I don't know if when I did it the first time, the uh like the normals weren't rotated when I flipped the axes, which would have probably helped if I had done that. Let me uh, let me just resave these. As position, normal, texture, and I want color in that order. Actually, what am I talking about? I am saving these as D through D and not a um. Not a vertex buffer, at least not yet. <sighs> okay, all these things have been uh, have been regenerated, which is good. And if I go back to not not bird game, if I go back to uh, bombardier, is in the beetle, and, uh, and and do that again, and load it again, uh, will everything's uh, surface normals be correct and looked correctly? And it looks like they are. Okay, everything is being lit from approximately the front going like this way. And the uh, the back sides are unlit. Okay, that is, a, that is a crisis averted. There was something wrong with the 3D models, not with my code, which helps. Well, there was something wrong with my code, which is that it wasn't resetting the, um, the uniforms uh, when, I, when I unset them to go to the, to the unlit shader, but that's uh, much easier to deal with. So, 
That's going to be a fairly sizable commit. And we can go back to, let's see, that is Penguin, which I am done with. We can go back to um, level design. What else do I have in here? I made a note to do terrain. I have in, in the thing I just closed, I guess I'll reload it. Um, one, of the, one of the editor modes in there is a terrain editor. I don't know if I want to do that for this. That would um, that would probably be severely overkill. All right. Here's a terrain editor, as you can see, and uh, you can you can shape terrain. Useful for some things, probably not for what I'm doing right now. Uh, the uh, the game has started without my asking it to because it was just sitting there and the uh, the wave timer expired. Anyway, now that we're done with the uh, surface normals, let's go through and like, I don't know, create a pumpkin patch or something or a melon patch or both. We can have both. Pumpkins and melons coexisting. Like that. The different sizes. Some have grown bigger than others. Um, there's some flowers, a, a number of flowers actually. A number of rock formations. I'll scatter flowers around later. Let's do rocks. All right, so rocks will just uh, add a little bit of, of character to the world. And you can see they, those are heart-shaped rocks with a random orientations, uh, at least around the vertical axis. And... Is that a smaller one? Yeah, that's a smaller one. Those, I'll scatter the smaller ones around later too. That's, a, that's one of the taller ones, okay. Looks like a termite mound or something. Maybe that can be by the starting position. If I, um... So they, they approximately emerge out of here. Oh, it looks like two waves started at almost the same time. That's fun. Um, I, I may or may not say that's, that's the termite mound that everything's emerging out of. I don't know if I care that much for world building. Oops. Meant F5, not tab. And there are some other, uh, there are some other shaped rocks in here, I see. And now we've cycled around to the trees. So later on, I will add more models. I will add more 3D models later. Uh, that, that time is not now. Let's see. I don't know exactly what I want this to look like. I want things to be clustered together, though, and I feel like after that, I can create a path around the clusters of things that I create, and then there would be open spaces for towers and that sort of thing. I don't want the, the, I don't want the whole map to be filled, obviously, because then where would you build... But um, putting something in the middle, putting some clumps around the sides, uh, not a bad idea. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would mind being able to build on top of flowers. Um, let's see. These are, uh, these are getting a little bit repetitive. I might want to vary it up a little bit. And I, I would definitely, now that, especially now that these tall trees are here, I would definitely like to be able to tilt down so that I can see what's, uh, so that I can see what's there. Kind of just guessing where I can put things now. It's not the best strategy for level design. Put a few more of these here. All right. I'll delete stuff too if I feel like something is suddenly like in the way of what I want to do track-wise at some point. Are there other small ones? There we go. Put a couple of the small ones together. Like that. Okay. And then maybe... Put a few, put a few trees in the middle too. Nope, that is... Yeah. If I, uh, if I have... Oh, I spawned two of them. If I have a, a tree around there, or a rock around there, I would want it to be smaller. Okay. Save the map in the map file. And the frame rate continues to decline. Again, not a primary concern. Uh, there are 
Red B, red C, yellow A, yellow B. As far as flowers go. Alright, flowers are fun. Everyone likes flowers. Let's put some flowers in the, uh... In the vegetable patch over there. Alright. I'll do another pass later where I add more. That, that guy's clipping through the rock. Let's get you out of the rock. I'll do another pass through the level later where I, uh... Add flowers of other colors, or other such things. Um, I there this is this only represents a small number of the assets in Kenny's nature collection. Um, later on, once uh, once level design gets a little bit more intense, I go and add more. And probably probably after I uh, I do the vertex buffer thing to make this faster, to make this process faster. Okay, so those, those are like roses versus tulips. Is the design here? All right. I should probably also add a um. I should probably add like a a counter somewhere for how many objects are in the room. How many environmental objects are in the room? That might be worth keeping an eye on. Like I said, these are going to be fused together later, maybe sooner than I'm expecting, because the frame rate's actually going down faster than I thought it would. Uh, it's very easy to plop down flowers all over the place. Um. Which is definitely something that can kill performance. I kind of want the flowers to be in front of the, the clusters instead of behind them, I'm deciding. Like back here. Let's at least move you over there, maybe. I think they look better in front than behind stuff. Behind stuff there, you don't really get to see them. Um... I won't put them by the uh, I won't put them by the start. I think I won't cluster them around the start. Also, let's see the melons and other such other such fruits. I can uh, clump together a little. Those things are kind of clipping through each other, which I'm mostly okay with. Okay. That's, uh, it's a little bit more dense, it's a little bit, uh, less random. Randomness in the level design is kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, having a- having stuff look the same is obviously no good. If you have a bunch of trees in a line, you probably want to mix it up a little bit. But, um, true randomness is actually not as appealing as some people th might think. Because, as you saw over there in that patch that I just cleaned up, it looked like somebody just overturned a bag of objects and put them on the floor, and things probably wouldn't actually grow that way. Uh, you might have a cluster of, of melons that are growing off the same vine. There's no vine object. I don't have a, a vine object. Uh, and then there's a couple of flowers, and you can imagine them spreading out from a single source, or a couple single sources, uh, more so than being completely random. Alright, anyway, we also have yellow flowers, which are a little bit more on the orange side. Yeah, they're pretty orange. They're not really yellow. I don't know who decided to label them yellow. Thanks, Kenny. And, um, we can give them the same treatment. Can I, can I kind of sneak you in there? No. What I can do is move you in there. Alright. Even those guys are kind of uh, inside the trees, a little hard to see. I think I might move this tree. Let's move this tree over here. And then, uh... There we go. Set dressing. Where were we? Yellow A? I'm assuming yellow B is also like one of the, the rose-shaped things. Maybe? Alright. In future levels, I'm picturing, um, environmental objects that interact with gameplay. For example, maybe there's a free tower of some sort that is like a frog that will be sitting on a rock next to a pond and will randomly eat things that walk past. Uh, totally not an idea lifted from uh, Kingdom Rush or anything, but just to vary the gameplay a little bit, make it a little bit less formulaic, uh, so that different maps actually, um... Ooh. Oh, I see. I was gonna say, is the, is the surface normals wrong on these flowers also? But no, the, um, the directional light is coming in from the top, and the sides of the petals are at an, at an angle. So they're, uh, they don't receive as much light. Okay. All is well. Alright. Let's go with yellow B. What do those look like? Those are very dark. 
Am I sure those surface bundles are okay, or are all those petals really pointing down? Maybe it might be a good idea to have a little bit more ambient light. Or other light sources. That's another thing, like having a, a, a moth lamp or something, or the flying enemies con uh, congregate around periodically and uh, make it easier for you, for you to take them down like that. And that would, those would probably logically have a light source attached to them or something. Anyway, this is not bad. I am picturing a similar path through the level as before, except maybe it might go like... If you're following the massacre, so like here, around this, around here, and then like loop back, and then end over here or something like that. Um, and then the loop point where a tower could, could attack a foe twice would be like here. It's... It's okay. I think it's a first start. I, I have a few friends who are into level design who I could ask about this um, later on, as well as obviously all you people watching. Speaking of which, I should probably wrap this up. I know there's a little time wasted when I was messing around with surface normals and stuff, but um, I think that might be on the longer side. I might do, uh, I might just speed up the video a little bit to like 120% so you can hear me talking in a funny chipmunk voice or something. Let me, um, let me delete those. And if I were to create like a mental map of what, uh, what the track looked like, I think it was something like this. That's a funny looking goldfish. Let me run the game now and see if they, uh, they go more or less around. Like I said before, I do think in the future a part of this, uh, this year level editor will involve... Not bad. Alright, I wanted to go farther out sideways because that's a very tight fit. Uh, I do think part of this level editor in the future will involve um, actually putting down path nodes so that you can see visually where things are going. But... Alright, so the general shape is right, definitely. There's just a little bit of, um... I think moving this... Maybe like here. And did not mean to add one, I meant to remove one. Something more like that. Let's try again. All right, send them in. Like they're getting a little bit close there. They're like clipping through that flower, so maybe I should probably also turn on snapping to the grid in the path editor. Ah, who cares? It's not even a permanent solution, as I've said. Let's send in another wave, because I missed part of that one. But they definitely end up in the right place. And if you were to build a tower, for example, here, it would hit them on the on the entry, on the entry to the map, and also um on the way out. Okay, well, that's good enough for now. My name is uh my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and we've got some level design. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this, even though it was on the longer side. The last couple of these videos have definitely been on the longer side than I really want. I'll see if I can, like, speed them up a little bit. Once I get to... Oh, I died. Once I get to 30 minutes in a video, the alarm bells start going off. Next week, I am going to do what I mentioned and uh, write a little path editor into that, um, into that level editor so that we can actually have a little bit more control over where things are going without guessing on the Game Maker path editor. And after that, I think it's time to do Tower UI. I've been putting off user interface things for most of the series, and it's uh, it's probably time to stop doing that because we want to be able to build towers in a way that is a little bit nicer than just click to build a tower and other such things. By the way, before I go, because I was curious, um, let's see how many uh. How many objects are in this world currently? I'm guessing a couple hundred or so. 353, sounds about right. My name is Michael, I hope you all enjoyed that. If you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there is a Patreon in the video description. If you want the code for this, uh, check the video description also. There's a link to a GitHub repository, check for the zero point. What am I up to? 15 release, 16 release? Which is going to be all the stuff that was done in here. I try to post about two Game Maker videos a week, one of these and one tutorial. 
I hope you found that interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to David Key, Edward Holt, Indie Punch, Yona Guernsey, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to get a shout out at the end of every video, head over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.